There are ancient teachings known as Hermetic Wisdom that are held sacred by some of the most powerful people today and throughout history. The reason they value this wisdom so much is because it works and explains how to cooperate and even create with life in ways that almost none of us have been taught. And this wisdom has very much been hidden from the common man and hidden deliberately. The elites don't want this information to be in the hands of most people because with this information in hand and with this information applied, people are less controllable, they're less ignorant, and they're less impotent. Essentially, when you understand these principles, you become more powerful and tap more into the power you've always had inside of you. However, there have been those in these societies or true students of the teachings that believe this information should not be available only to a select few, but made available to all. The creator of these teachings never intended for them to be covered up and hidden from view. These seven hermetic principles explain, to the best of our human understanding, how our universe works, how the laws of this universe work, how to focus on what will work for us, and so much more. Now, I am merely a student when it comes to these principles, and it takes many, many years of discipline and study and application to even get close to being a master. However, you do not need to be a master to start applying these principles and to start getting results that change your life for the better. When you start applying even one of these seven principles, you'll start changing your life and doing things that will leave people who are not aware of these things, that are not in the know, dumbfounded and wondering how you did it. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the seven hermetic principles so that you can start learning about them, apply them, and if the spark is created within you, to go explore them even more deeply. The all is mind, everything is mental. So we're starting with the very first principle in Hermetic Wisdom, and this is the law, the principle of mentalism. And that is basically stating that everything that you see, everything that we can see and sense with our senses comes from the spirit, comes from the all, which in its very nature is unknowable. We can never know what the all is or everything about it, but we know that everything comes from it. The best way the Hermetists basically understand and describe the all is that it is a universal and infinite living mind. And everything that you see around you, even the things that you do not see and you know nothing about because you don't know what you don't know, are creations from the mind of the all. It is simply a mental creation of the all, and it adheres to the law of created things, more of which we're going to cover in this video. Now, the reason it's important to understand what are the laws of these created things, what are the laws that govern all of these creations that have come from the all? We can call it source. There have been many different names that have been given to it, but the hermetists like to say the all because they find it to be the most accurate. And the reason it's so important to learn these principles and everything else is because you are also a creation of that all, and you are subject to these laws and principles. And when you know how to work with them, you suddenly can start taking way more control, way more power back in your life, and to start living, living more of the life you want to live. So essentially, the universe as a whole, and in its different parts, is simply a creation from the mind of the all. And again, you exist within that mind of the all. A quote from a master of these Hermetic principles is that he who grasps the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path of mastery. So something to take away uh, from this is that our universe or any other universes or anything that you can perceive or see or again things that you would be able to perceive or see but you just not do not know of at this point within the spiritual, the mental, and the physical all exist within the mind of the all. And what that means is the universe is mental, and you, yourself, have a mind. This allows us to understand how to exist more on the mental plane of existence, and how to use mental transmutation that can move so many things in your life, because you are tapping into what the universe itself is, which is mental. So just in the same way that we create a universe of our own in our own mentality, so does the all create universes in its mentality. However, we need to understand that the universe um, creates from an infinite mind and we create from a finite mind, meaning we'll never be able to grasp the infinite mind of the all. Now, the two are similar in kind, but just different 
in degree, meaning the degree to which the all creates from mind is something that we'll never grasp. It's at the extreme ends of the pole and we can't even see the end of the pole and we create from a finite level of mind, but we still create from mind. The universe is mental. And so the first thing to take away from this first principle of mentalism is that the universe is mental. And that when we learn about this and we start operating more from the mental plane, learn how to control this, learn how to use this, we start to create way more in our life because the universe is mental. As above, so below. As below, so above. The second principle is the idea of correspondence. And what this means is that each plane of existence is actually in correspondence with each other. So this includes the physical plane, the mental plane, and the spiritual plane. I just quoted it in the beginning, but that is where the quote, uh, as above, so below, and as below, so above, comes from. It comes from this wisdom, from the Hermetic Principles. That if you have one thing here, it will be affected here, it will be influenced here, and so on and so forth. And what this really represents, and why this is so crucial to understand, is that something you do, whether knowingly or not, in the mental plane, whatever you do will have correspondence on the physical and also the spiritual, and vice versa, and also with all the others. Meaning that everything influences everything. There is nothing that you do in the mental that does not have some kind of influence in your physical. And there is nothing you do in the physical that doesn't also have the same effect. And this ultimately suggests that everything is connected that everything has an influence over each other. You can think of this almost like a butterfly effect to a certain degree. And we'll definitely cover this more as we go over the principle of cause and effect. But it's understanding that each one of these planes of existence are in correspondence with each other. They are not separate. They are all connected and they all influence the other. So what's important to take away from the principle of correspondence? Ultimately, to understand that the way you act, the way you feel, the way you think, the way you move influences everything in your life. I had someone else, um, a teacher of mine, that said it in this way. It's a more funny way of putting it. But when you piss in one part of the pool, guess what? You piss in all of the pool. And that's just to say, you don't piss in one part of the pool and then you section that off and it doesn't affect the rest. No, eventually it seeps into the rest. Meaning you could, for example, be doing a lot of spiritual practices. Maybe you take care of your physical body, but your thoughts are all over the place. Or you think very lowly thoughts or whatever else. That is going to seep in and affect the rest. Maybe you put a lot of emphasis on the physical and the mental, and you're really good at taking action and doing all that stuff, but you're not doing the spiritual. You're not connecting to source. That eventually is going to seep in and be affected as well. And why this is so crucial to understand is because when you do, you can understand about having a balance with all of these planes. Understanding that your thoughts do have influence on these areas and your life. That your actions do, your words do, you know, your energy, your thoughts, your emotions do. I said thoughts twice there. But ultimately that it all influences and acts um, together and that they are not separate things. At the end of the day, they are connected through the principle of correspondence, and they do interact with each other. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Now, this may be the one that you are somewhat familiar with because in the last 10, 20 years, you know, especially with the, you know, YouTube becoming popular and so many different things, people are always talking about frequency and vibration. And so you may already be bought into the idea that everything vibrates. Everything around you is made up of what we call energy. You know, there's many different names we can give it, but it vibrates, it's moving. There is nothing in the universe that is not moving to some degree, but we can take this even deeper and learn this at a, a much deeper level allows us to apply it at a much deeper level, which allows us to have it influence our life in a positive way. Now, taking into account the principle of polarity, which we're going to be going over next, you have spirit at one end of the pole when it comes to vibration. Now, the interesting thing about this is that spirit vibrates so quickly, so beyond anything that we can conceive, that it almost seems rest, like it's at rest. Like it almost seems like it's motionless. But this is the same kind of illusion that when you spin a wheel, you know, if you spin a wheel fast enough, it goes fast enough to the point where it actually seems like it's not moving. So it's such an intense and quick vibration spirit, this realm, that that's what it appears like. It's so quickly that it almost appears at rest, but it is moving at a rapid rate 
a vibration. It is beyond the physical. It can't be physical because it is vibrating so quickly where matter and physicality has to vibrate slower to come into the five senses and be in the physical world. And that's the other pole of vibration. So you have spirit at the one end, um, all the way to the highest level of the pole, which is vibrating so fast that it almost seems like it's not. And then you have like the densest levels of matter. And this is kind of the gauge here. You have these two ends of the pole, and then you have millions and millions of different rates of vibration and modes in between that. This even includes what's called the ethereal realm, which is, again, almost like a middle realm between the physical and the spirit. We're not going to really dive into that um, in this video, but just to kind of give you a little, little spark if you want to go explore that a little more. Now, why is this important to understand? It's because every thought, you know, everything you do has its corresponding rate of vibration. Remember, we went over the principle of correspondence, meaning that every thought has a correspondence on the physical realm, on the spiritual realm. Everything you do has a correspondence at a different level of vibration on these different realms. I'm sure you've heard the idea of like attracts like, or that you will only get the level that you're vibrating or the frequency that you're on. For example, with a radio, um, if we tune it to a certain station, are you going to get jazz music when you're on a rock and roll station? No, because it's not at the rate of vibration that brings about rock and roll if you're on a jazz station. And this is also what plays here when it comes to your thoughts, when it comes to your energy, your emotions, I should say energy and motion, when it comes to the actions you're taking. What level of correspondence is that vibration activating on these different planes? What's great is that by focusing and polarizing your mind to any degree you wish, thus gaining perfect control over your mental state, mood, and so on, your ability to influence the physical and the rest of your reality goes up exponentially. Meaning that through the principle of correspondence, knowing that if you focus on a certain rate of vibration, certain thoughts that come with a certain rate of vibration, through the principle of correspondence and other ones that we're going to be going over, you will start to bring the equivalent, basically bring the same frequency of whatever that is on the other planes into your life. This is when we touch upon manifestation. You know, there are many different ways to say this. I like the radio station analogy because if you are focused on a certain station, through the principle of correspondence, you will start bringing things that exist on that station on other planes into your life. It will start to activate those on those planes. I think you can see that through the understanding of this principle, the ones we've gone over already, and just you wait for the other ones we're going to cover, plus consistent application of it, that it's going to give you access to powers you've always potentially had access to, but have yet maybe to tap into. And when you do this, when you tap into this principle of vibration, you start vibrating at a certain place and you start focusing on, in on that. Again, it starts happening on the other planes of existence through the principle of correspondence. I think you can see that certain things that almost appear magical can happen in your life. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites and they are identical in nature and just different in degree. Now, this is one of my favorite principles because it really opened up a different level of understanding. And I'm going to give you some of the examples that when I was, when I read these and when I kind of understood these, they really started to shift me because understanding the principle of polarity is so crucial. And I mentioned in the beginning there, it's, it's that many things are just different in degree. And a prime example of this is actually hot and cold. Now you might think that hot and cold are two completely different things, but they're in fact the same thing in kind, only different in degree. Like when you think in hot and cold, you're not thinking hot over here and cold over here as if they're two separate things. You're thinking on the kind of measurement and degrees of temperature. So if we're up here on this measurement in a different degree, we're at hot. But if we lower the degree, we're at cold. So it's actually the same thing, just the level of degree is different. It would be ridiculous to think that they're two separate things. Here's hot and here's cold. No, it's just when you change the degree in temperature, you get hot. And when you shift a degree, you get cold. And I'm going to go over in a second why this is so crucial to understand and how powerful this can be. It's the same with something like up and down or left or right. The more this way I go, the more left I am, for me at least, and this way more right. But it would be ridiculous to say, well, here, here's left and here's right and they're separate things. No, they're the same, just to different degrees. Same with up and down. So with all of these opposites, they're not really opposites necessarily. They're actually the same kind of thing, just to different degrees. And when we go to the extremes, they seem very different, but ultimately in nature, they are the same. 
This is why a lot of truths are also half-truths. The funny thing is, I already mentioned this, but spirit, so like energy and spirit, is actually just the polar opposite of matter. They're on the same thing, but at just different degrees, which we call vibration. So at the higher end, on spirit, it's a different degree of vibration. Again, much faster, much intense to the point where we, we can't even conceptualize what that is. To the densest forms of matter at the other end, which are so solid, they just don't even appear like they're vibrating at all, yet they are. Essentially, it's all vibration just to different degrees, and at different degrees of vibration, it shows up differently to our senses, to the way we perceive things. One seems solid, the other we, we can't even, we probably can't even perceive. Now, the reason it's so crucial to understand this, uh, and all of these really, because these are principles that are playing out, they are laws, they are unchangeable, they are going to be working in your life, but when it comes to like manifestation and the way things come about in your life, this is a crucial one to know, because we want to talk now about transmutation. Now, transmutation you may have heard of, like people trying to turn lead into gold and all that kind of stuff, alchemists, but ultimately that's kind of like to get you off the trail a little bit. You see, transmutation is not about changing one thing into another necessarily. It is about changing the degree of something so that it shows up or manifests differently. Now, an example given in the book The Kabbalion, which you can also read about these seven principles in more depth, they talk about the difference in degree between something like love and hate. Now, the problem with this is if you're trying to transmute something like an emotion, which I think we can say is very useful to be able to transmute. Let's say you're in hate and you want to start feeling love. Wouldn't that be very useful to be able to do? But here's the problem and what happens with most people in the trap. A lot of people, for example, might be in fear. And so they go, I'm in fear. I want to not be feeling fear. So I want to change this. I want to turn this fear into love or this fear into gratitude, or this fear into peace. The problem is peace, gratitude, and love are not the opposite of fear. They do not exist on the same level. They do not exist on this kind of thing, this different rates of vibration um, as the same. They actually are two separate things because the opposite, the polar opposite of fear is actually courage. The polar opposite of hate is love. And then if we looked at something maybe like anger, we would say calm. But if we try and go from anger to love, well, we're just going to be crossing energies, putting out weird signals, and never really get there and never feel better. We might just feel numb at the end of the day. But when we understand the principle of polarity, and we just understand that actually a pole is the same thing in kind, just to different levels of degree, we can think of, okay, I'm on one end of the pole. I want to get to the other. What is the other end of the pole? And so you can use this for fear, for example, maybe you're fearful. So instead of trying to get out of fear by thinking love and gratitude and all these different things, what if you were to think about courage? What if you were to think about the times you were courageous? And you don't even need to do that. You can think of the times someone else was courageous and through mirror neurons and other things because we're all connected, you'll start because you're focusing on courage to feel more courage. And it will be easier to do this because it's actually the same kind of energy just to varying degrees of vibration, just to varying degrees at the different ends of the pole. And so this is why it's so crucial to understand this, to understand again, what is on the pole that you're trying to transmute so that you're not trying to take something that's here on this pole and then move over to this pole and put it up here because it's not gonna work. But when you understand the law of polarity, you can take that fear and go, okay, well, it's redundant to try and move that and shift that into love, but I can shift that and go up in degree and move into courage. Or if I'm in hate, it's silly to then try and go to calm, but I can go to love. And so that's why it is such a useful one. And it's one that really did an aha for me because I used to try that all the time from fear to like love and it didn't seem to work that well. But then it's like, oh, fear to courage. And then from there I can try and, you know, tune more into love, but trying to tune into love from fear is a very difficult thing to do. Everything has its ebb and flow. Everything has its rhythm, its seasons. All things rise and fall, come and go. Like a pendulum swing, it manifests in everything. So the principle of rhythm, you can almost think of also as the principle of timing. 
Have you ever known someone or heard of someone that always seemed to be at the right place at the right time always? Like they just seemed to know? I almost guarantee you if that's the case and like they were always there when the opportunity was there, they were always there at the right time for a good thing to happen for them, etc, etc. I almost guarantee that they are aware of this principle or just through some happen chance, even though it's not really chance, but through some series of events, they learn to do this. And it's because they're tapping into this principle. Now, a lot of people you see doing this and it seems like everything they touch turns to gold, they have the Midas touch. It's because they understand the principle of rhythm. They understand when they're in an ebb and when they're in a flow. They understand when the pendulum is here and when the pendulum is here. They understand the wave and the trough, the peaks and the valleys, the ups and the downs. And a lot of people don't understand this and so they try and fight or try and flow when it's time to ebb or ebb when it's time to flow. And so understanding this principle allows you to then work with the rhythms in your life instead of against them. One way I like to look at this is one of the um, easiest examples of people who work against, and there's, there's two ends of this extreme, but works against the rhythm of life is people who are involved in hustle culture. There's a reason that people involved in hustle culture burn out all of the time. Because there's a time for ebb, but they're like, I need to hustle, 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 that eventually catches up with them, and then life almost forces them to rest through what we call a burnout. They're stressed all the time. They, you know, There's all this stuff happening. You even get to a point where people who do this end up taking their own lives because they go so far in the other direction against the natural rhythm of life. But when you understand this, when something leaves, you don't panic. When something happens, you know it's just the law of rhythm, and you're able to start getting a feel for how this is operating in your life. It allows you to know when it's time to take action, and when it's time to reflect and ponder and maybe plan. It allows you to know when it's time to plant the seeds and water them, and when it's time to harvest. It's when you know it's time to maybe even cultivate the dirt, and it's not time to plan at all. The law of rhythm is going to give you the gift of timing when you learn to work with it. This is also very much the principle of change, understanding that nothing is permanent. And people who fight this again, they end up having a lot of chaos in their life because this just is something that happens. Remember, the principle of vibration, everything is vibrating, nothing is still, meaning everything is moving and everything is constantly changing. Even if it's to very small degrees, like we see with matter, matter, the things we see as matter, are changing very slightly, but they still are because they're at one end of the pole of vibration. But then again, if we go to the other end of the pole where it's like pure spirit, it's freaking changing every second. It's just everything all at once, just deciding what it's going to be, you know? It's change can happen very, very quickly. And this principle of rhythm understands that nothing is permanent and everything is changing. When you accept this and work with this, imagine the repercussions it has in your life. Now, how can we better work with this principle? Because you may have gathered from what I've been saying well, if one thing has to be here, then it has to eventually be here. So if I experience joy or ecstasy or all these kinds of things, does that mean I have to experience extreme pain or something similar? And you may have noticed some people in your life or people you know actually do this, right? They have like this, these amazing highs, but then these really low lows, and then these amazing highs and these really low lows. Well, there is a way not around this because the principle of rhythm and all of these principles are ever present. They're omnipotent, they're, they're, they're omnipresent, they are always acting. But there is a way to transcend this by going to a different plane, which is the mental plane. By using the principle of mentalism, we can allow ourselves to not be affected by what we could call the negative swing or the ebb part of the pendulum. And this is what masters do. Now again, this will still happen in your life. So you will still see the physical representation of this happening. Let's say you make a lot of money or a lot of amazing things, like you have a harvest in your physical reality. Well, sorry, there just has to be a part where there's going to be rest and kind of regeneration and, and, and kind of just recuperation in your physical. The problem and that the trap most people uh, have when this happens is they associate to this event from the physical they get all worked up, like nothing's working, what's happening, yada, yada, yada. Instead of being able to embrace the so-called negatives or embrace the bends in life. And I've talked about this in other videos. But when you can approach so-called chaos in your physical, so the pendulum swing going back, which you know is coming, 
because you know these laws. And when you know it's coming, it's so much easier to prepare. But if you stay grounded, if you stay calm and miss the storm or you know, within the storm, if you are able to understand this is just a natural principle playing out and you put yourself on the mental plane of existence while you're doing this to remain calm, to keep your energy high, to not get sucked into like the negative end of the pole when it comes to your emotions when this happens. You allow to this pendulum to swing kind of uninterrupted and eventually it'll be coming right back this way as well. And then you can celebrate the winds and all these different things. But in the river of life, there are bends, there are winds, nothing is a straight line. There is always an ebb and a flow. And so that's what this principle of rhythm states. And so when the ebb is here, Work with it, not against it. Do not fight it. Do not try and, you know, force something to happen. If you work with it, you embrace the bends, you celebrate the so-called negativity, which is just a label we have given what happens, uh, given to what happens during this pendulum swing or the ebb. It isn't actually negative. The universe doesn't look at it as negative from like a bad perspective. It's just the natural consequence of the pendulum going this way. It now has to go this way. Right? But then if you're able to associate with it much differently, you will notice much different results in your life. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. Now, we've all heard of cause and effect before, but you've maybe never delved into it, uh, taken a dive into it more deeply. And I think it is crucial to understand cause and effect if you want to be a creator of your life, if you want to create a reality that you actually want to live in, if you want to create your own universe within your own mind for you then to live in. You have to understand cause and effect. Now, by this point, you probably realize that cause and effect isn't just on the physical plane, but also on the spiritual and mental planes. And this is why chance is not a thing. I made a video a while ago that went over how things are not coincidental. There is no chance. And I got a lot of resistance from a lot of people who can't fathom this because ultimately you have to understand that if you are noticing an effect in your physical life, certain something in your circumstances, something coming in, the cause may not have been something that happened on the physical. It most likely was something that happened on the spiritual or mental plane, and the effect of those causes are playing out in your life. And so many people believe that things are not connected because they're not aware of this, or they have to know in order to believe in it. But guess what? You will never know everything. You will never know anything close to anything, and there are things you don't even know about that you don't know. Ultimately, understanding if the effects are here through the principle of cause and effect, there was a cause. There always is a cause and there is a cause to every single effect. And through this principle, we can understand that and then start to create new causes in our life. And what do new causes create? What do different causes create? They create different effects. This also plays into something that I mention on this channel all the time. I've made videos on it and that's the outer world follows the inner world. The outer world typically is very much an effect that has been produced from an inner cause, the inner realms of the spiritual and the mental. You know, the outer world is an effect of the thoughts you've been thinking most of the time, the energy towards those thoughts, how much you've connected to that spiritual essence of you that comes from the all, how much you have acted upon what comes through when you do that. All of that is a cause that leads to the effects you're now noticing in your life. But everything, every effect, every effect you've noticed, everything you can possibly imagine you noticed to notice has a cause. Ultimately, the thing to take away from here, or what I would invite you to take away, is there is no chance. Everything has a cause. And when you understand this, it empowers you because then you can think differently, you can vibrate differently, you can more often use things like the, law, um, the principle of polarity to move to a different pole, which causes you to vibrate at a different level, then it's enacting the principle of vibration. The other principles we're gonna be going over as well, or one more we're gonna be going over, which is important to understand. And when you start vibrating differently using these principles, when you start using the principle of mentalism, understanding it's all mental, so maybe being more intentional with your thoughts is crucial here. It's not just maybe, it is, <laughs> right? And so when you're engaging intentionally with these things more often, choosing 
instead of just allowing yourself to be thrown in the wind where it is you want to resonate and vibrate, what you're thinking of, what you're being influenced by, then you will start to produce new effects in your life. And the fact of the matter is most people are at effect to the causes of different agendas and desires of other people. You know, things like government, things like political figures aim to have you be at effect to their causes. And the only way you can be at effect to their causes is if you believe they're stronger than you, if you believe they're more powerful than you. And what you're ultimately doing in that scenario is giving them your power. So take it back. Stop being a pawn in someone else's chess game, on someone else's chess board. Take back your own board. Take back your own game. This is your movie. And the thing is, when it comes to your movie, you have to make the decision to be in the spotlight. You have to make the decision to be the king or the queen on your chessboard. But so many people, because they give their power away and they see others as better or more powerful, even though they come from exactly the same place, the same energy, but you can use it for so much good in your own life by not being a pawn in someone else's game um, and by allowing yourself to use cause and effect to create new effects in your life instead of being at effect to other people's causes unless you intentionally choose to be because that's something in line with how you want to live. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. Now the word gender comes from the Latin root meaning to beget, to procreate, to generate, or to produce. And so this word in hermetics has nothing to do with sex or a person's reproductive organs. We are talking strictly about masculine and feminine energies and how they manifest on different planes of existence. So think more yin and yang rather than female or male. Now the masculine and feminine energies actually work together to form all things on the physical, mental, and spiritual planes. Now in Hermetics, masculine energy is described as penetrative, progressive, assertive, conquesting, and actively directing inherent energy towards its feminine counterpart. Feminine energy, on the other hand, is described as receptive, sacred, treasured, protective, maintainer of traditions, honoring priority, and nourishing what is most essential for life. Essentially, the masculine energy is linked to the will, while the feminine receives impressions from the masculine and works on generating new ideas, thoughts, concepts, and so on, including the work of the imagination. And so without the feminine energy, the masculine will act without restraint or order or reason and lead to essentially absolute chaos in your life. However, the feminine energy without the masculine would constantly reflect and fail to ever do anything resulting in stagnation and complacency. Yet when these two energies work together in harmony, you start getting intentional action, the power of will and vision combined with creative force and careful thought to bring into manifestation. And so understanding this allows the student to bring in their masculine and feminine energy in order that they may start manifesting in magical ways, to start balancing these energies that are meant to be in harmony to create. And it's why so many people struggle in today's world to create because there is such an imbalance when it comes to masculine and feminine energies to understanding what that even is. And we give all these labels to it, which makes us want to be like, I don't want to be masculine or have that. I don't want to be feminine and have that because we create this kind of value system on them. But just understanding that they are both needed in the process of creation. And if they're not balanced, you will not create well at all. But when you balance these energies within yourself, you suddenly have the master key to creating so much in your life. Now, when combining all seven of these principles together, you receive the key to unlocking your full potential of power and manifestation. You become the master of your world by staying in tune and balance with all of these laws. However, what I found with myself and with my students and even my peers, when you don't understand a crucial principle called the mirror principle that I go over in this video next, deeply in this video next, 
you are going to fail to really use these in the best way possible because the outer world follows the inner. And the mirror principle explains that and also shows you how to do it. And if you mix the seven principles we went over today and you work on those and you combine it with the mirror principle and the understanding you'll get in this video along with the tools and techniques you'll get, you are going to be a reality creation master.